Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Start with the regular hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F. Inside the hexagon, inscribe circle O, and inside circle O, inscribe the regular hexagon Q, R, S, T, U, V. Given that R is the radius of circle O, show that 3 is less than pi is less than 2 root 3. This problem is adapted from a recent GCSE test that was given. I want to thank Kaka and David for the suggestion. Can you figure it out? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. I read that a lot of students were confused by this question because they didn't know where to start. It's actually a fascinating question, and it was an interesting exercise in the history of mathematics to estimate the value of the constant pi. So here's how this story goes. Let's go step by step. Let's simply start out with this circle and this inscribed hexagon. Thousands of years ago, Archimedes thought of this idea. If we take a look at the perimeter of this hexagon, it certainly is going to be less than the circumference of the circle. So we have the perimeter of the hexagon is less than the circumference of the circle. Now, if we then circumscribe a hexagon about the circle, this will overestimate the circumference. So the perimeter of this hexagon will be larger than the circumference of the circle. So now, what is the circumference of the circle? Let's say that the circle has a radius that's equal to r. By definition of pi, the circumference will be equal to 2 pi multiplied by r. Now let's calculate the perimeters of these hexagons. So let's start out with the inscribed hexagon QRS TUV. We will slice up this hexagon like a pizza. Let's make it into six equal slices. What can we say about each slice? Let's first calculate the central angle. So each of these six triangles are equal to each other and we go about 360 degrees. So each of the six central angles will be equal to 360 degrees divided by six, which equals 60 degrees each. Now we have one radius and we also have another radius here. So these two sides are equal to each other. So we can calculate the values of the remaining two angles. In this triangle, we have 180 degrees minus 60 degrees for the vertex angle, leaving 120 degrees. Opposite the two equal sides, we have two equal angles. So each angle will be equal to 120 degrees divided by two, which equals 60 degrees. So each of these angles is equal to 60 degrees. We now have a triangle with three 60 degree angles and therefore it's an equilateral triangle. So each of these six triangles is an equilateral triangle. So now each of these sides is equal to R. So then each side of the hexagon is also equal to R. So what's the perimeter of the hexagon? It will be equal to six times the length of one side. Each side is equal to R. So the perimeter is equal to six times r, and that's the perimeter of the inscribed hexagon. It now remains to calculate the perimeter of the circumscribed hexagon. What we will do is we will construct a radius of the circle to the tangent point between the circle and the hexagon. So we will construct this length and it will be equal to r. Let's now focus on just the hexagon. We have an altitude with a length equal to r. Let's slice up this hexagon into six equal slices, just as we did before. So the six shaded triangles are six equilateral triangles. So each of these angles is equal to 60 degrees. Let's now go back to half of the equilateral triangle. So it will be this triangle here. We have one angle of 60 degrees. We have an altitude, which is a right angle. So the remaining angle will be equal to 30 degrees. So we have a special 30, 60, 90 right triangle. We want to calculate the length of the hypotenuse. So let's pull up our 30, 60, 90 right triangle. The ratio of the hypotenuse to the longer side 
is 2 divided by root 3. So let the hypotenuse be equal to x. We have x divided by r is equal to 2 divided by root 3. We can solve this equation for x by multiplying both sides by r. We get x is equal to 2r divided by root 3. If we multiply the numerator and denominator by root 3, we can rationalize the denominator to get x is equal to 2r multiplied by root 3 divided by 3. So that's the length of the hypotenuse, but this is exactly the length of one of the sides of an equilateral triangle. So in this equilateral triangle, all three sides have the same length, so AF has exactly the same length, and the side is equal to 2R root 3 divided by 3. Now let's calculate the perimeter of this circumscribed hexagon. The perimeter will be equal to 6 times the length of a single side. A single side is equal to 2R root 3 divided by 3, so we substitute that in, and we do some simplification here. And this is equal to 2 multiplied by 2r root 3, which works out to be 4r root 3. So let's put this all together. We'll go back to our original diagram. By considering the lengths of these shapes, we have come up with an inequality. We have 6r is less than 2 pi r is less than 4r root 3. Since r is a positive quantity, the radius is a positive quantity, 2r, the diameter, is also a positive quantity. You can divide an inequality by a positive quantity without changing the direction of the inequality sign. So let's divide through by 2r. So we have 6r divided by 2r, which simplifies to be 3, 2 pi r divided by 2r, which simplifies to be pi, and 4r root 3 divided by 2r, which simplifies to be 2 root 3. So this gives us the inequality 3 is less than pi is less than 2 root 3. And that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So this calculation gives an estimate that pi is greater than 3 and less than 3.464. This is not a great estimate, but it's also not bad for such a simple calculation. Now hold on, we said we're done, but was every single step we did actually justified? If you ask this question, congratulations. So the person who submitted the question to me asked a very excellent question. Don't we need to justify that the perimeter of the inscribed hexagon is less than the circumference of the circle is less than the perimeter of the circumscribed hexagon? And yes, one should absolutely justify this step if you want it to be completely rigorous mathematically. But it was a very good question. I didn't know the answer. So I just remembered that it was in the tradition of Archimedes and I was blinded because of course Greek mathematicians had justified every single step. But it gave me pause and I tried to think about, was this actually a justified step? Let's try to think about it. So first we have the perimeter of the inscribed hexagon is less than the circumference of the circle. This is not too hard to justify. Let's take a look at one side of the inscribed hexagon, which is QR. So this is a straight line segment between the two points Q and R. The circular arc, which it subtends, will be an arc QR. This will be a curved line segment. So it is intuitive that the length of the straight line segment QR is less than the length of the arc QR. This is true for each of the six sides and so we can justify that the perimeter of the inscribed hexagon is less than the circumference of the circle. So far, so good. But what about the next step? That the circumference of the circle is less than the perimeter of the circumscribed hexagon. On the sides AB and AF, let's label the points of tangency as G and H. So we need to compare the length of this arc HG versus the lengths of HA plus AG. So we somehow want to say that the length of the arc HG is less than the sum of the lengths HA and AG. But this is not so obvious why it's true. It's intuitive that this would be true, but HG is not a straight line segment. So how are we going to justify this? I spent some time trying to find a simple explanation. Eventually, my research led me to the original source, 
Archimedes on the sphere and the cylinder. Proposition 1. If a polygon be circumscribed about a circle, the perimeter of this circumscribed polygon is greater than the perimeter of the circle. He takes this step that the length of the arc is less than the length of these two straight line segments, but it's justified by assumption number two. So I went back and said, what is assumption number two? Assumption number one is saying that a straight line is the shortest path between two points. And assumption number two is essentially assuming what we wanted to prove. So it did lead me to a sort of unsatisfying conclusion that not everything was completely justified as I've been taught, but still it was something that was important historically. If you can justify this step, please let us know. I'd be very curious if there's a simple explanation. So that historical note aside, Archimedes did successfully use this technique to give an estimation of pi, and he calculated this with a 96-sided polygon. And he ended up with the result that 3.1408 is less than pi, is less than 3.1429, which gives us the approximation that pi is about 22 over seven, or approximately 3.14, which is such an excellent approximation for 2000 years ago that we do have to credit the genius of Archimedes for such an amazing method. So I imagine most students who saw this question were just annoyed at how difficult it was, but I'm really glad it gave us an opportunity to explore an important part of mathematical history. What an interesting question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.